to Exodus chapter 32. We appreciate the ministry of the Spirit this morning, encouraging, reminding, helping, and blessing. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your presence and for your power, for your love, for the ministry of your Spirit, even now, touching people's lives, capturing our attention, drawing us closer to you, to call upon you, lean upon you, have confidence in who you are and what you're able to do. Thank you, Father, for the Word of God. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Father, for the blessings and promises that we experience on a continual basis. We thank you for the ministry of your power and love this morning. I pray that it will continue. I ask that you uh, lead me and guide me as I minister your word today, that we hear truth and have confidence in what you're capable of doing, that we trust you and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and you'll direct our path. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering prayer, for the joy and victory that we have, and we give you praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Uh, Garrett, would you put uh, Hebrews 12 and 22 up, please? Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are come unto Mount Zion, referencing Jerusalem, referencing heaven, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Next verse, please. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. There's an acknowledgement there concerning some people's names are written. Some people's names are recorded in such a way that it's going to be acknowledged and recognized at some point in the future. Would you put up Luke 10 and 20? This was the occasion where the disciples couldn't cast out a demon. There were certain things required, and Jesus responded by saying, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's something we should be glad about, happy about, rejoice about, and praise God about. That's our names written in the book of life, in the book of heaven, the various names that it refers to, but that's why we rejoice. You know, it's a privilege, it's an honor to be in a position to do the works of Christ, and that's needed, and that's powerful. That's not necessarily what we rejoice over. We rejoice over the result of it, the benefit of it, but what we rejoice in is because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. From time to time you hear someone uh, praise God because of it. We hear various things we praise God for. But the bottom line, for eternity's eternity's sake, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, and we rejoice over that, and we praise God about that. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Absolutely. I'm thankful that my name was written in the Lamb's book of life some time back. And I've caused myself, I've purposed myself to believe and trust God that it's not taken out. Amen. There's more than one place where it talks about God taking someone's name out of the book of life. I'm going to touch on that just a little bit this morning. There's a potential, there's a possibility that some people's lives will not be found in heaven because their name has been taken out. Of the book of life. Let's notice what the scripture says this morning. Exodus 32. Now, this was the occasion where Moses had led the children of Israel out of Egypt's bondage. They've crossed in the desert. The Israelites have faced and experienced some powerful miracles. And they got to a place where Moses said, Stay here. I'm going up on the mountain. I'm going to get the Ten Commandments. I'm going to fellowship with God, so forth and so on. And he was gone such a long time that the Israelites became bored. And they decided to do something of their own pleasure. And we know the story. And they got into something that was very sinful, very ungodly. And God at that point wanted to destroy all of them and start all over with Moses. And Moses said, wait a minute. What about the promises that you made with Abraham, 
Isaac, Jacob, and various ones, sands of the sea, and all these things that you've said. If you're going to do that, it'll ruin everything. So God said, all right. Moses persuaded him not to do anything along that line. And it went on for a little while more. Moses went back up on the mountain, come back down, and found things worse. God wanted to get rid of him, and he did to some degree. Uh, Verse 30 of chapter 32 And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin, Moses is saying, and if not... Blot me, I pray thee, out of my book, or out of thy book, which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Do we need to say any more? Going to, but we don't really need to. Situation where God was lenient, tolerable, forgiving, merciful, however you want to describe it, to his own people to the point that he did forgive them from time to time. If they would follow certain circumstances, certain guidelines rather, everything was okay. But from time to time, as we're subject to, we fall prey to temptation and we commit sin. It happens. Don't say, I never sin. We do. It's not because we want to or plan on it, but it happens. We're not quite in our immortal body yet, so things are going to happen that's not pleasing to God. Here was an occasion, though uh, Moses made such a plea. If you're going to get rid of them, take my name out of the book of life. Same book, same book, same book that we were talking about on the two verses up there. Now that was quite a proclamation for Moses to do such a thing. I believe he was willing He believed God. He believed the promises. He was expecting certain things to happen. He seen uh, glorious miracles. So God said, no, I will destroy. I'll get rid of those who sin against me. Like I said a moment ago, I don't think there's anyone in here will on purpose lie and cheat and steal and be sinful. I don't think we do. But because of weakness and because of uh, uh, instability, we find ourselves not doing what God wants us to do in one form or the other. But the point is made made here that God said, I will, or Moses offered, please take my name out of the book of life if this is going to be the case. And God said, no. And there's other references like in Psalm 69 and also 109. It says prophecy of people or referencing prophecy of people such as Judas will suffer because of the names removed from the book of life. It's not a new thing. It's not a thing that's uh, brand new or just popped up in somebody's theological mind. It's something that's been around for a long, long time. What's going to be the uh, 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 final say? The final say is whether or not your name is in the book of life. Now, those of us whose names are in the book of life and we're looking and watching for the rapture, looking for Jesus to come back and catch us up in the air with him, once that happens and we're out of here, we're good. Amen. Somebody's listening. Amen. We're good. When that happens, we're good. We'll never find our place ever with God, without God. We'll always be with him. So shall we ever be with the Lord, the scripture says. Amen. Revelation 13 and 8 talks about there will be those who will worship the Antichrist whose name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. That's in there. Don't be so weak and unconcerned about your spiritual welfare that you miss Jesus is coming back and taking us out here. You'll be left subject to some more severe things that's going on in the planet today, in our world today. Uh, We can be. We can be subject to worshiping uh, uh, the Antichrist if you don't find it important not to now. And I'm not trying to insinuate anything. I'm saying the final say is whether your name's in the Lamb's Book of Life or not. And there's a potential that can be taken out. How can that be? Those who sin against God. Amen. Isn't this powerful? It's absolutely thrilling. Be sure your name is in the Lamb's book of life. How do you do that? Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Serve God faithfully. 
receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost for power to be a witness and faithful servant of God Almighty. That's what we do to make sure uh, our name is left and kept into the Lamb's book of life. We don't want some angel waiting around God saying, well, it's okay, it's about time to do that, and they take it out. That's kind of a flimsy way of looking at it, but it's possible. Whether it's an angel do it or not, somebody else do it or not. How, okay, turn with me to Revelation. Revelation chapter 2. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This message is about a book which is called Book of Life. It's called The Book. It's called Thy Book. It's called My Book. It's called The Book of the Living. We're used to the term Book of Life or the Lamb's Book of Life. They're all in there. Here in the second and third chapters of Revelation, this letter called The Revelation of Jesus Christ was sent to these seven churches. These seven churches of Asia back then was churches that was established by the apostles. Jesus had been gone a good while. They were uh, initiating into this Christian lifestyle, subject to a lot of influence that wasn't good. Each of those seven churches is represented in our life today in one form or the other. Their problems are problems in churches today. Their warnings and admonitions are the same ones that are in our churches today. There's no perfect congregation on the planet. Every one of them has their good points. Every one of them has something about them that needs to improve or maybe even repent from. I'm going to briefly go through every one of them. Let me say this before I get any farther. Every one of them was told, be an overcomer. Those that are an overcomer. Two or three of them, he said to repent. Stop doing what you're doing or else. The first one we're very familiar with. He commended them for several things, Ephesus. But there was one thing that they needed to change and fix. He said, you've left your first love. The reason why you do what you do. The motivation of why you do what you do. This letter was sent to that church. These types of things were sent to them, and they heard them. And churches today need to remember, we need not to leave our first love. What's that mean, Pastor? The motivation, the desire, the love, the compassion we have for the lost and for one another. Don't leave that. Don't just be a robot and go through the motions. They were doing well going through the motions, but their motivation wasn't there. The second one is Smyrna. They were recognized for the works and the circumstances and troubles. He said to be faithful, go, uh, be faithful to the end, don't give up. There's congregations that's struggling. There's congregations that have trouble. There's congregations that's pounced upon, but the, they're doing well. They're doing the best they can. And that church was told, hang in there, be faithful to the end, don't give up. The next one was Pergamos. Overall, for the most part, you're doing well. But you're allowing wrong doctrines to be taught and represented. Idolatry, fornication was going on. Things were going on they needed to stop doing in the congregation. They began well. They were Christians. They were established by an apostle. But there's certain circumstances they needed to change in order to be an overcomer. There's not going to be anybody in heaven whose name's in the Lamb's Book of Life who's not an overcomer. Listen to these warnings. I'm not pointing a finger to anybody. I'm saying listen to these warnings. Don't allow any of them be any kind of an influence in your life. We want to be an overcomer, established on the gospel of Jesus Christ, promoting faithfulness and honor and sinlessness. Amen. I don't want to be involved in anything else. Are we perfect? No, none of us are perfect, but we're forgiven. If we ask the Lord to forgive us. We're frail. We're weak. From time to time, we forget. From time to time, we fall into circumstances. We're backed up into the corner. Things happen. But we acknowledge that, and we thank God for forgiving us because we asked him. That individual is an overcomer. The individual that's backed into the corner and don't care whether they sin or not, and they're suffering, they're not an overcomer. Something else has overcome them. Amen. Another church is called Thyatira. They were commended for their good works, but there was a woman that was seducing others while she was as a prophetess teaching in the congregation. Bad deal. 
need to repent from that. They had an establishment. They were commended for their good works, but something else was going on that was tainting the influence of their ministry. There's churches around like that. Sad to say, may not be a prophetess, may not be thus thus and so, but they're engaged and involved with other things that's uh, diabolical and devilish. They're out there. Amen. Sardis, a few godly people, just a handful of the people that was there that were godly. They had a name that they were alive, but they were dead. Folks thought they were doing well, but they were dead. What's the problem there? No motivation, no passion, no desire, no faithfulness. But there was a few that was doing okay. Their works were not perfect, and the advice was strengthen yourselves. And every one of these, he's saying, those that are an overcomer, if you're going to be an overcomer. Philadelphia, this is about the best of all seven of them. Philadelphia, they had a little strength. They kept his word. They had not denied his name. Stay encouraged. Be faithful. Hang in there. Keep going. Then the last one we're pretty familiar with, Laodicea. They were neither hot nor cold. Self-serving rejected because they were neither one or the other. It was so bad that the Lord said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth and reject you because they wouldn't make up their mind one way or the other. Ever try to deal with somebody like that? They wouldn't make up their mind one way or the other. It's intolerable. (laughs) Rejected. Like I said earlier, a few of these were told to repent. Stop doing what you're doing. Make sure what I'm telling you to do that you're getting involved in. Make sure that you consider the truth. Consider God's mercy. Consider His righteousness. All these kind of things. And we do. My point today by the Spirit of God who gave me this message yesterday is no one understand how privileged and blessed and honored we are that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. How much we should rejoice and be so thankful that that's in place and it's not going to change. Amen, and nobody's going to hack into it and get rid of it. A lot of hacking going on in our society today and ruining people's lives, causing people's lives to suffer and be in torment because of this kind of ability to get into somebody's social security number, insurance numbers, driver's license numbers, and all kinds of ways that we are trying to be stable in our society to get through it. But there's one place something's going to be protected by God Almighty, under the condition that we so don't sin against him. The remedy is, Pastor, but, 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 but the, here's the remedy. If you find yourself failing before God in whatever matter that it is, to whatever extent that it is, acknowledge that to him and confess and ask him to forgive you. He's provided that in our covenant to secure that our name stay in the Lamb's book of life. When we received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, when we were born again, in a moment's time, our name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. An eternal being with God Almighty forever and ever, based on faith, based on hope, based on trust. So we must continue believing and having faith and hope in God and trust Him continually while we're in this life. Anybody want your name taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life? No. Father, show me what I need to do or not do to make sure my name stays in the Lamb's book of life. Here's a verse in Revelation chapter 3, verse 5. It says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. So there's a potential right there in the book of Revelation, almost to the end of your Bible, which says, if you'll do such and thing, such and such certain things, I will not blot out your name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Let's be an overcomer. When we face difficulty, challenge, confrontation in, in the spiritual realm, or whatever realm that you might want to acknowledge that's given you problem. Recognize that you have the ability to stand, that you have the ability to put on the whole armor of God and take care of it, that a word of God will go forth and not return void. It will accomplish what it pleases, and it will prosper. Know and understand that you are the one who's deciding that your name's going to stay there or not. Maybe not the decision, but prove the decision. Amen. This is a glorious message. This is not a browbeaten message whatsoever. It's not any more than the other message. It's one of truth, one of power, one of glory. My, my, my. What happens when one sinner gives his life to the Lord? All the rejoicing goes on in heaven. 
Amen. That must be a really big book. Be an overcomer. Live a life of a Christian, not the life you lived before. We're all changing. We're all developing. We're all growing. Consider the admonition to the seven churches. Consider to follow Jesus Christ and what he had to say and to teach. What the apostles had to say and to teach. Only the overcomers are going to have eternal life with God or he wouldn't have told the churches what he did. Or he wouldn't have told the churches what he did. Trust God. Believe him. Know that God loves you. He longs after you. He began to work in you when you said yes to him. He started working with you. Isn't that marvelous? You know, <clears throat> I can't count the times, hadn't tried to, but there's been many things in my life I didn't know what I was doing. I needed instruction. I needed guidance. I needed help. I'm not a natural in most everything. I'm not a natural in most everything. Some folks are talented and natural in a lot of things. They're capable of doing They do great. I'm not one of them. <laughs> I sat on the corner of my bed one time holding a guitar for an hour doing just one thing. Finally got it. Finally got it. My teacher was more thrilled than I was about it. <clears throat> we need to be diligent. We need to be purposeful. We need to be dedicated to the Lord because there's a potential of things turning out, not what we're expecting, but we have today. It's the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. We have today to make certain decisions. If you know there's things in your life that needs to be changed for his glory and purpose, we need to do that. We, know, we do not need to go on the path of unrighteousness so that there's a potential, a likely potential, of our name being taken out of the book of life. We need to be consistent and diligent about what he's doing in our life. Trust him, honor him, glorify him, and be blessed for an eternity. May the Lord richly bless you. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. Songs, hymns, spiritual songs. Unto the Lord. Be in fellowship of his spirit. Be in fellowship with him regularly, not just, oh, it's church time. I need to get ready. Regular. There's people in your life that you have a relationship that you're in contact with every day. Aren't you? Amen. We need to be that much to God, really, and more so. Amen. Anyone need prayer today? I know there's some prayed for earlier. If you have a particular need, like the church pray with you about.